Professor Kleine, I'm here with uh, another lesson on stoichiometry. This is a part of stoichiometry called limiting reactants. Um, it's the latter part of a chapter. And uh, so starting out with a simple problem like this, it says uh, we have element Y2 plus R2 makes Y2R. Now, I'm using these mega blocks here. Notice the yellow one, of course, relates to Y, and the red one relates to R. These mega blocks are stuck together. I've got two of them here. And then, of course, we've got the mega blocks forming Y2R here. Now, the only information you need to solve a problem like this, uh, how many grams of Y2R can be made from 140 grams of Y2? The only information you really need is the mass of one Y grams per mole and the mass of R, seven grams per mole, five grams per mole, seven grams per mole. This is the information you'd find on the periodic table for these elements. So Y is obviously not an element on the table, neither, neither is R, but just as it stands as an example. Okay, now the question is, how many grams of product can you make from 140 grams of this. Now, I, I suppose you can see that this is not a balanced chemical equation yet. If you don't balance the chemical equation, you cannot solve this problem. So then you look at this, you see what I need to do is I need to double my Y2 and I can double my product. And so that's my chemical reaction. Two Y2s plus one R2 make two Y2Rs. So the balanced chemical equation is a two to one to two. Okay, now solving this, we have to start out with our given amount here, 140 grams of Y2. So I'll start out with that. We're trying to figure out how many grams of Y2R can be made, so I'm going to skip over here and uh, leave myself a little bit of space. How many grams of Y2R can be made from 140 grams of Y2? Well, notice the first step we have to do is convert from grams of Y2 to moles of Y2. Then we need to compare moles of Y2 to moles of Y2R, and then we're going to convert to grams of Y2R. This is a pretty much a standard process. Don't forget this mole ratio piece here is, is completely important. Now, to get from grams of Y2R to moles of, of, of grams of Y2 to moles of Y2, I have to utilize this information here. One Y is five, but the formula states I have two Y's, so I have to add uh, two of these together for a total of 10 grams of Y2 is equal to one, shall we say, mole of Y2. The mole being an actual molecule count. Grams is just something you weigh on a scale. Then the next step, of course, is to um, relate moles of one to moles of the other. I get that number from the balanced chemical equation. So this has to cancel down here. Two moles of Y2 will make two moles of Y2R. Again, that number came from the balanced chemical equation, and this number came from the balanced chemical equation. So now we've got to this step. Right now, if you were to do the math, 140 divided by 10 is 14, times 2 divided by 2, we have 14 moles of this can be made. Now we have to convert that to grams. In order to do that, we have to go back to this information, and we realize that Y2R is 2 Ys and 1 R, so that's 5 plus 5 plus 7 is, is a total of uh, 17. So 17 grams of Y2R makes one mole of Y2R.
Okay, so the, the answer is going to be 140 divided by 10 times 2 divided by 2 times 17 is 238 grams of Y2R can be made from one, 140 grams of Y2. This is a very standard, typical type of arrangement for working on stoichiometry. This pattern, you see it in almost all the problems. Again, you know, converting from grams to moles, moles to moles, and then from moles to the thing you're looking for here on the product. Okay, so you recall the chemical reaction from the first problem is the same. Two Y2s plus one R2 make two Y2Rs. So now given the answer to part one, which we saw here, 238 grams of Y2R, how many grams of R2 would be needed to react to make that amount of product? Okay, so, and we know the answer is 238 grams of Y2R. So this is a typical type of problem. We know we're starting out with 140 grams of this. Now the question is how many grams of that would we need to make the total of 238 grams uh, that we found from the first problem? Well, the, the way you solve it is almost identical. Take this number here as our new starting point. And now we're going to kind of work backwards and find out how much of this would have been needed in terms of grams. So I'm really looking for how many grams of R2 would be needed if you're going to make this many grams of product. So using the same format, I have to convert from grams of Y2R to grams uh, to moles of Y2R. I do that, first of all, by acknowledging what we learned in the first equation that it's 17 grams of Y2R is one mole of Y2R. Then we have to do the mole ratio just like we did there. I know that two moles of Y2R and one mole of R2. That comes from the balanced chemical equation that we had from the first problem, as you recall. It was 2Y2 plus 1R2 make 2Y2R. So this 1 comes from here, and this 2 comes from here. And finally, we have to convert to grams of R2. So to do that, I need one final step. I want to bring this down here. So 1 mole of R2. Um, now R2, you recall, R is 7, so R2 is 14 grams of R2 per mole. And so the math is going to be 238 divided by 17 equals, divided by 2 equals, times 14 for a total of 98 grams of R2. So 98 grams of R2 is needed. Let's take that back and put it in here. And I want you to make an observation. It turns out that the total amount, 140 plus 98, the total number of grams on the reactant side must equal the total number of grams on the product side for stoichiometry to be true. So what we're doing here is proving that mass can either be created or destroyed. We have the same amount of grams on this side as we do on, on that side. Okay, now as a final problem, Let's finish this off with a true limiting reactant scenario where we're given a certain amount of Y and a certain amount of R. So remember, these were the amounts we had in the first uh, two problems, but now I'm tweaking it. I'm, I'm having less of R Y2 and I'm putting in more of R2. So you can see right away, taking away the ratio here, less of this and more of that means certainly I'm going to run out of Y2 because the real ratio is a gram ratio of 140 to 98. So here I have too little of this and too much of this. It turns out then when we run out of Y2, we stop making product. Now what I want to do is show you chemically how we 
solve such a problem. So the question is, starting with this amount of both reactants, which reactant runs out first, and how much uh, Y2R will actually be made? Okay, this type of problem, we need to do the same calculation as before. We need to run it twice, though, in parallel, one for Y2 and one for R2. So starting out, I have 120 grams of Y2, and then I have 100 grams of R2. Okay, so I definitely need to convert uh, to moles of Y2 as before. We saw that this is 5, so the total is 10 grams of Y2 is 1 mole of Y2. We know that 14 grams of R2 is 1 mole of R2. We learned that from the other problems we did. And then doing the mole ratio, they're going to be different. Now we're looking toward how much product we can make. So we know that two moles of Y2, that number coming from the original balanced chemical equation, will make two moles of product Y2R. Again, that comes from our balanced chemical equation. However, down here, one mole of R2 will make two moles of Y2R. Because one mole will make two moles. So that's an important point. Uh, now, as a matter of fact, we could end it right here because we don't really need to know how many grams we're going to form. It would be good enough just to know, relatively speaking, how many moles of both. Uh, later, I can always convert that to grams. But in fact, let's solve this first of all and see what we come up with. So 120 divided by 10 is 12 times 1. This is going to make 12 moles of product, Y2R. Here, this is 100 uh, divided by 14 equals times 2 equals, well, or really 100 divided by 7, I think is about 14.3 moles of product, Y2R. Okay, so this demonstrates the reality like we thought before, we suspected we we're going to run out of Y2 and make less product, so we did make less product. If you compare these two numbers, this being the smaller of the two numbers, what that really means is uh, when this amount of Y2 is run out, you stop making product. And that means that you're going to have an excess amount of R2 and that also means that Y2 is what we call the limiting reagent. Uh, don't forget the word reactant. These are both synonymous. They mean the same thing, limiting reactant, limiting reagent. This is a typical limiting reagent problem because we've determined that Y2 is the limiting uh, reagent because it made less product than did its counterpart, R2. Which made so that actually means that we're gonna we're gonna make this much product actually, which answers the second part of the question. This is fictitious and non-existent because you can never make this much product uh, given the fact that you've run out of one of the reactants. If you added more Y2, you could probably finish off the rest of this, but as it is. Uh, you run out of Y2, you're done making product.